maayong aga sa tanan. Dalayawon ang Ginoo sa silingat ion nga makapadayon kita sa aton nga pagtuon sa aton nga morning devotional. Sa nagligad nga pagtuon naton, aton nga ginlantaw ang una nga beatitude sa Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Nya kung sa diin si Jesus naghambal, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And aton nga natun-an nga ang poor in spirit dira nagabuot silingon sang um, a sense of nothingness before God or that nga malipayon kuno ang mga tawo nga kabalog gid sila nga sa ila ka uglingon wala wala gid sila kung wala ang Dios sa so, sininga aga magapadayon kita sa aton nga pagtuon sa second nga beatitude sa so, Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 nya kung sa diin si Jesus naghambal blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted no, sa aton nga pagpadayon no gusto ko uluyag ko mamangkot sa inyo Madumduman mo pa bala ang katapusan nga tiyon nga naghibi ikaw? Or what what made you cry? What makes you cry? Kamulo ka mo kung anong makapahibi sa tao, nag-speak ini sang volume sa kung si sin ni siyang klase sang tao. Sa kung sa ano siyang klase sang tao. Ang baby would normally cry over over milk. Ang isa ka a child would normally cry maybe for a loss of a pet, napatay ang iyang pet. Or ang isa ka-adult, ang makapahibi siguro sa adult is probably a trauma, maybe death of a loved one, maybe losing a job. But ang point is that what makes a person cry says a lot about about that person. And our text in Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, si Jesus naghambal Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. No, ano ninyo klase sang paghibi? Si Jesus naghambal siya nga, malipayon ko no ang mga nagahibi, for they will be comforted. Now, maybe after uh, hearing or reading sang sininga particular nga beatitude, mahambal ikaw nga, mas malipayon, gin siguro yung wala nagahibi. Kaya ang rason nga nga nagahibi sila, kay tungod nga hindi sila malipayon. So paano nga si Jesus maghambal nga ma- blessed pa ang mga nagahibi? Ano ini nga klase sa paghibi? So amo na siyang aton nga pagatulokon kag pagatun-an sa sininga sa sininga aga. This principle of mourning, you no know, ining prinsipyo sang paghibi, budlay ni siya iintindihon sa aton lang uh, kaugalingon niya pagpanguna-una. Maybe Jesus is um, getting somewhere sa sininga pagtudlo niya sa naghambal siya nga malipayon kuno ang mga tawo nga nagahibi. Kung nagahibi kita sa sala ng mga butang, we are going to be miserable. Iban nga mga tawo nagahibi sila for for a lot of other reasons. Some cry for money, some cry kung wala nila nakuha ang gusto nila nga trabaho or ang promotion. Other people cry kitungod nga they don't have as many gifts as they desire. Other people spend their lives crying and mourning about the sick or maybe a loved one sa family nga napatay na. But none of it helps uh, very much. Just like sa point out na kung sa last na niya pagtoon, ang beatitude is really paradoxical. No, kasi kwawi. Do ka hindi siya hapustun lon hindi siya nag-go uh, lang with the flow sa aton rational nga pagpaminsar kag panguna-huna ka, ka ano gid ka paradoxical now ang ginapromise ang beatitude sometimes incongruent sa kun ano ang iya nga kung anong iya nga gina-demand ang beatitude nagapromise ang blessedness pero ang hambal ni Jesus blessed ka kuno kung nagahibi ka malipayon ka kuno kung kung nagahibi ikaw so this is a paradox kag ang paradox ang second nga beatitude is very obvious what could be more self contradictory than the idea nga ang mga tawo nga nagahibi amo nang mga tawo nga malipayon and ano ini bila nga klase sang rejoy ano ini bila nga klase sang paghibi or mourning bisan ano man nga klase sang kabuhi may ara ikaw whether simplistic man ang imong pagpangabuhi or sophisticated manggaranon man ikaw o kung pigado educated ka man o kung ah, wala ka man sang tapusan nga nga kurso do hindi gid halos naton maintindihan nga ang mga tawo kuno nga nagahibi amo nang tawo nga malipayon normally ang aton nga pagnatamin is 
Pleasure brings happiness. Money brings happiness. Entertainment brings happiness. Ang fame, ang pagdayaw sa ibang tao, naghahatag sa happiness. Therefore, kung tuloko na to ng aton nga concept, ang aton nga idea sa kalipay is kung wala ka sang kasakit, kung ang tanan mong kinahanglan na providean, kung wala ka sang mga frustration sa life, wala ka sang disappointment sa kabuhi, wala sang hardships, wala sang problems, that is our concept of what could give us happiness. But humbly, Jesus, happy are the sad. Happy are those who mourn. As a matter of fact, sa Gospel of Luke chapter 6, Jesus even went on so far to say, Woe to you who laugh, for you shall mourn and weep. Ang beatitude sa Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, Jesus turned the world's principles upside down. Exactly upside down. He reversed the path to happiness. Pero anong lang ginambot si Ringon sang Bible dere? that blessed are those who mourn. Jesus Christ here is not talking about mourning or paghibi over unfulfilled dreams. No, si Jesus said, wala nag-refer sa paghibi kaya tungod nyo nag-break ka mo sa imo nga girlfriend or tungod nga wala mo nakuha ang promotion nga gina-desire mo gid or tungod nga um, naguba ang imo nga salakyan or Uh, nasunog ang inyong balay. No, that is not the kind of mourning. Although nga, ang paghibi naton sa amuna ng mga butang, they are also important to Jesus. Pero hindi na amo ang kind sang paghibi nga iya nga gina-refer diri sa Matthew chapter 5 verse 4. He is not talking about mourning over unfulfilled dreams or personal tragedies. Ang mourning or ang paghibi nga gina-refer ni Jesus diri is ang paghibi or grief over personal sins. In other words, kung i-rephrase ko ang ginambali Jesus, Blessed are those who mourn over their personal sins, for they shall be comforted. Kung balikan na ang first nga beatitude, siling ni Jesus, Blessed ko ang mga tao nga kabalugid sila nga wala-wala, gid sila sila ko ang galingon apart sa Diyos. And ang second nga beatitude na gahambal, Blessed ikaw kung kabalo kagid, kag-conscious ikaw sa imong nga pagkamaksasala. Because you will find comfort. Because there is comfort in the lavishness of God's forgiveness. Now, <clears throat> ang lesson din niya gusto ko lang ibilin, especially sa aton niya mga Kristohanon, amo niya ang lesson. One of the true marks of maturity in Christ is not sinlessness, but the growing awareness of our sinfulness. Ang person nga nagatubo sa iya nga kristohanon nga pagpanglakaton sa Ginoo, ang isa sa mga marks nga nagamature siya is hindi nga sinless siya nga kristohanon. There's no such thing as that. But that a growing consciousness, a growing awareness of your own personal sinfulness before the Lord. Now, nangtawon naton, ano ni siya bala ang mourning over personal sin? Now, let me tell you that the Lord is concerned about all the legitimate sorrows ang iya ng mga kaanakan. Just like sa kinambak ko kagina. Ang ginoo naton is not naive, hindi siya insensitive, hindi siya indifferent sa imo nga mga ginaagyan. So, ang mga butang na ginamorn ni mo, maybe a loss of a loved one, maybe sickness, maybe pain, maybe death, maybe personal tragedies or unfulfilled dreams, God is, God is concerned. God is Um, God is relating sa imo sa amo muna ang mga ang mga ginaagyan and he promises to console, he promises to comfort, to strengthen us whenever we turn to God for help. So Jesus is speaking of godly sorrow dere, no godly nga pagmourn. Not only those who are poor in spirit or that only those who are poor in spirit can manifest. So you see, progressive ni siya ang pag-order ni Jesus sang Um, beatitudes. Una, you need to acknowledge that you are nothing before God and then you acknowledge your own sinfulness. As a result sa imong nga acknowledge nga wala-wala kagid ginakilala mong imong pagkamaksasala. In the Greek, ining word nga mourn, may a- ang Greek word may ara siya sang nine gid ka different nga Greek words sa English word naton nga mourn. Amo na ka-articulate ang Greek nga language. 
ay naging gamit din ni Jesus ng Greek word is amo ni siya ang strongest, the most severe na kind sang paghibi nga normally gina-represent or ginagamit ni siya to signify the deepest, the most heartfelt grief tag normally gina-reserve ni siya nga term para i-describe ang paghibi sang isa ka tao over the death of a loved one. So amo ni kadalom, amo ni kagrabi ang picture nga ginapakita ni Jesus Amo ni ang kind sang kagrabi sang imo nga paghibi over sa imo personal sin nga mag result in isang comfort alin sa Ginoo. So the word carries the idea of deep inner agony which may or may not be expressed by outward weeping or wailing or lament. Buot silingon, hindi buot silingon nga nagahibi ka sa outside nga nagagrieve over kana sa imo nga mga sala. So, nag-speak in niya of a deep and inner and oftentimes, um, hindi man lang ni siya ganit express ng paghibi outwardly. But, dalom nga paghibi and consciousness of your own sinfulness before the Lord. So, ano ba lang resulta sin eh? Haba sa verse, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mourning over personal sin brings comfort. Happiness or blessedness does not come in the morning itself. But silingon, ang kalipay, hindi na siya resulta kaya tungod yung nag ka. Kundi, ang kalipay, resulta ni siya kung ano ang himuon sang ginoo tungod nga nag ikaw, tungod nga conscious ikaw, tungod nga aware ikaw sa imo personal nga sin. Ang samis, describe niya ang pagpatawad sang ginoo as far as the east is from the west. Amo na kagrabi ang gugma sang Diyos sa aton. Amo na kagrabi ang kaluoy, ang pagpatawad sang Diyos sa aton. That whenever we come to God, bringing our sins to Him, telling Him na ginoo, oh, grabe gitang akong pagka-deprave. Grabe gitang akong pagka-maksasala. God will always forgive. That's why blessed are those who mourn because they will find comfort. Hindi kitungod nga nag-mourn sila, but because of what God will do, Kitungod nga nag-mourn ikaw sa imong mga sala and you have acknowledged that you can do nothing about it except if God will forgive. Godly mourning brings for God's forgiveness which brings happiness to the person naging patawad sang Dios. So mourning is not merely a psychological or emotional nga experience that makes a person feel better. It is a communion with the living and with the loving God who responds to the mourner. Naga, paano nag-respond ang ginoo? God responds with forgiveness. With the reality that God will forgive. Just like David in Psalm chapter 32, verses 1 and 2, David said, Blessed is the one whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. Malipayon ko na ikaw kung ang ginoo nagpatawad sa imong mga sala. And paano na matabo? When you mourn over your personal sin. <clears throat> only mourners over sin are happy. You know why? Because only mourners over sin have their sins forgiven. Sin and happiness are totally incompatible. Kung nag exist ang sin, ang happiness wala gina siya nag-a-exist. Kung ang tuntuod niya happiness nag exist ang sin wala na siya nag exist Hindi pwede nga magdungan ang dua. Until sin is forgiven and removed, happiness is locked out. Mourning over sin brings forgiveness of sin. And forgiveness of sin brings freedom. It brings joy. It brings happiness that cannot be experienced in any other way. Not only Mourning over personal sin brings comfort, but secondly, mourning over personal sin brings conversion. Amo nang hamba sa 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Ang tuntuod ko nung pag mourn sa aton personal nga mga sala, naga bring about or naga result sa salvation. Because when we come to God, bringing our sin, acknowledging na hindi tagid ni kaya, wala ni kita may mahimo sa aton mga sala, God is readily willing 
to forgive. That's why blessed is the person who mourns for his personal sin because he will find comfort in God's salvation. Since godly mourning brings forgiveness, therefore, godly mourning brings salvation. Now, as an application to this, <clears throat> sometimes we, we, we tend to think, especially mga Kristohano, no? Nya, do hindi nakukadumdum sang last time pastor nga naghibi ko over sa akong personal na sin. I mean, what's what's stopping me from from doing that? Let me just mention to you a few. How can we become godly mourners? May tatlo lang ko dili ka things sa gusto emphasize. Number one, we must eliminate the hindrances. Mga utod sa Ginoo may mga hindrances nga hindi ta dasig ma-acknowledge, nga hindi ta dasig makita ang ato nya pagkamaksala sa tubangan sang Dios. The first step requires removing sa mga hindrances nga nag-exist sa aton life, nga nag-keep sa aton from mourning sa paghibi sa aton nga mga sala. And oftentimes, nag-resulta na siya nga do kontinto na lang kita sa kung ano ang aton nga standing before the Lord. That makes us resist God's Spirit, that makes us question God's Word, and worse, it hardens our hearts. So ano ni siya nga mga hindrances? Number one, love for sin. Love for sin. Love for sin is the primary hindrance to mourning. Kung may arap padra ang mga sala sa tagipusuon naton, sa kabuhi naton, na ginapet naton, ginatago naton, that is preventing you from mourning sa so, imong mga personal nga sin. That is the reason why you are not happy. The author of Hebrews reminds us, the sin that easily besets us, it will take away your joy. It will make you fruitless. That love for sin, that sin that you are holding on for so long, it will freeze, it will petrify your heart, it will make your heart cold before the Lord. So remove that hindrance, that love for sin. Secondly, remove that despair. You know what despair is? Despair is giving up on God. Ang despair is refusing to believe niya kaya kapaluasan sang Diyos. Ibi ani ani diri subong sa inyo, nga nagalantaw sini, niya gambal ka nga amunagid ko niya. Do wala na gid niya way of getting out of this particular sin of this particular uh, nga bisyo. Siguro amo na lang gid niya ang akon nga nakaimtangan sa sakatapusan. That is despair. And that is something to be removed. Kitungod nga despair is putting yourself outside of the grace of God. Remember the first beatitude, nothingness before God. Ginoo kabalugid ko nga wala wala gid ko. Ginoo ari akon mga sala, wala gid ko di may mahimo, buligi ko Ginoo. Despair believes that God has given up on you. So if you are a person who is despairing, subong, don't put yourself in that position. God is willing to forgive. Acknowledge your nothingness before God. Confess your sin before God. Mourn over your sin. Despair hides God's mercy behind a self-made doubt. So do not doubt. Hindi pagdudahi ang kaluoy kay kagrasya sang gino. There is nothing greater than God's grace. You are never far enough nga hindi ka malabot sang grasya sang ginoo. The third thing nga nagahinder sa aton nga we need to eliminate is conceit. You know what's conceit? Conceit is choosing to believe that there is nothing to be forgiven. No ginapapati mo kaglingon mo nga kagamay lang man niya sang sala ko compared ni sa iya. So gamay lang yang grasya kinanlan ko. That is conceit. That is a form of pride. No pareho sa nga naghambal ka nga um, hindi kuya kinanlan sang dako gid niya pagpatawad kay hindi man kuya amog na kagrabe nga maksala. Oh, that is scary. That is scary. Let me remind you, beloved in the Lord, that there is no such thing as small sin. You know why? Because there is no such thing as small God. Remove conceit. The fourth is presumption. Presumption hinders mourning because it is also a form of pride. It recognizes the need for grace, but not so much grace. No satisfied ka na lang sa cheap grace. So don't assume nga wala kaya sa sala or gamay lang yung mga sala. Just like what I said, there's no such thing as small God. So there's no such thing as small sin. The fourth is, or the fifth is procrastination. No remove procrastination. Maybe some of you here are thinking, buwas lang ko yung maripenta. Buwas isetol ko na ni ang ako niya kantanan sa ginoo. Kabuluman ko nga makasala ko, buwas isetol ko na ni. That is scary and that is dangerous. You know why? Because ang ni James, chapter 4, verse 14, we are like a vapor. 
who appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Wala ka kasigurado kung buhay ka pa buhas. So do it now. Do it now. Hindi na pagula ta ang buhas kayo. Wala ka, because tomorrow is never promised. Eliminate the hindrances. The second step, study God's Word. You know, the more we are exposed to the Word of God, the more we know God, the more we see the purity of God, the holiness of God, <clears throat> the justice of God, the more nga makita na ito ng atatun ka ugringon. In light of that, the more we realize nga amo kita sinigli ka grabe ka sa makasala. And that will lead us to mourn sa atun nga mga sala. Studying the Word of God will make us realize that sin crumples on God's laws. Ang sin naga minimize ang gugma sang ginoo. Ang sin naga dupla sa glory sang Dios. It grieves the Holy Spirit. It spurns the forgiveness of God's God and His blessings. And in every way, we resist the grace of God when we do sin. So the more we study the Word of God, the more we become conscious of that. Sin makes us weak and make, makes us impure. It robs us of our comfort. It robs us of our joy. Much more, it robs God of His glory. So the more we expose ourselves to the Word of God, it's like a mirror. Yeah, the more nga nagatulok kita sa ispiyo, the more, the more tang makita kung ano ang mga higko sa aton, sa aton, sa aton yung hitsura. So eliminate the hindrances, study God's Word. And the third way to become a godly mourner is to pray is to pray. Pray that God will give us the contriteness of heart, the humility of heart. Nga i-acknowledge natin nga ginoo, I am nothing before you. I am I am depraved, I am wretched. Grabe gid ang ako nya pagka makasala sa imong atubangan. And only God can give this kind of heart, this contriteness of heart. And God will never refuse to give forgiveness to a person who is contrite in heart. So how to become a godly mourner? Eliminate the hindrances. Secondly, study God's word. And thirdly, come to God in prayer asking for a contrite heart. Beloved in the Lord, as we face another day today, may we become more aware of who we are before God. As Jesus Christ said, that is the secret of being blessed. That is the secret of being happy being poor in spirit, acknowledge your nothingness before God, and secondly, being godly mourners, mourning over your personal sin because you are conscious that you are sinful, crying over sa imo nga pagkasinful. Jesus said, you are blessed if you do that because you will find comfort in God. So as we end, are you sensitive to your personal sin? If you laugh at sin, if you take it lightly, you can be sure that you are not grieving over it. Beloved in the Lord, do you have a sense of God's forgiveness? Have you experienced the release and freedom of knowing your sins are forgiven? Do you have this peace and joy in your life? Do you have the divine comfort that God promises to those nga magpalapit sa iya asking for forgiveness? And maybe you are here this morning and kabalo kagid nga wala ka pa sang personal nga kaantanan sa Ginoo i invite you to come to Jesus Christ i invite you to come to him believing yang iya ginimo dito sa cross is sufficient to forgive you of your sin and ask god ask god to forgive you in Jesus Christ and you will find real blessedness for Jesus Christ said blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted one of the true marks of maturity is not sinlessness, but the growing awareness of one's sinfulness before God. May we grow mature as we acknowledge that we are nothing before God and that we are becoming more aware of our sinfulness before God and coming to Him daily and consistently asking, asking for forgiveness and experiencing the very comfort that God promises. May the Lord bless us. Let us pray. Our dear God and loving Heavenly Father, while we are, we are still trapped sa sining nga human body, you know, hindi gid mahimo nga hindi kami makasala. And so you are calling us to daily preach the gospel to ourselves 
it will make us more patient to others. It will make us more loving to others because we will be reminded of how you've been so patient and loving to us. It will make us more forgiving to others because preaching the gospel to ourselves will remind us of the vastness of the forgiveness that we have received. Oh God, help us discipline ourselves to daily mourn over our personal sin. It will make us humble. It will make us patient. It will make us loving. It will make us forgiving. It will make us more like you. So Father, I commit to you your people now. Sa business ang taas ng ilaob dahon sa sining adlaw, help them to grow aware sa ila ginoo nga pagkawala-wala before you. Wala-wala kami tungod ginoo nga sinful kami. And that will lead us to daily ask for your grace, ask for your enablement, ask for your mercy. And just like what Jesus said, that is the secret, that is the path, how to be truly, truly happy. We thank you, Lord, for your word. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.